we could out of? They were gifts that we got from um, our sponsor at our last office meeting. Oh. But there's just water in there. Okay. <laughs> <Get right>. <laughs> That's <laughs> what I'm saying too. <laughs> Hi guys. <laughs> My bad. I'm sorry. Oh, I love it. It's funny. <laughs> she put a little apple juice in there. Really throw us off. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see what it said? No, I said because clients. <laughs> <laughs> Can I get you one that says because agents? <laughs> mm, sure. <laughs> oh, my Lanta. Hi guys, welcome, welcome. We, we'll give it a couple more minutes because realtors are notoriously late. Come join us as we're, we're laughing about what is everyone drinking right now? Stacy, you had like some sort of tea thing going on. It's hot lemon water. Ooh. I told you when I got sick about a month ago, I couldn't okay. drink coffee after that and I just never have. So I'm, it's just hot, more honey than lemon, but it's pretty yummy. Oh, I'll have to get you some local honey that I, I we have from a local farm here. It's mm -hmm. absolutely delicious. What's everyone else drinking? Mine's I'm water. Uh, sure. Mine was water, but it's gone. <laughs> Mine. Mine is water also. <laughs> oh, good Lord. Hi, Antoinette. Good to see you, honey. I got Hi, you. Liz. Good to see you. Oh, darling, you were able to make it. Awesome. Okay, guys. Again, I'm going to give it a few more minutes because I'm going to guarantee you're going to have at least a handful of folks that uh, come in last minute. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about what it is we're talking about today, and then I'll do we'll have an introduction of uh, each of these lovely ladies. Um, so this is how to set yourself apart your first year in real estate. Um, the women that we have here today with us, these are actual MCM mentors that work day in, day out, boots on the ground with first year agents. Um, these three women uh, work in two different states, so you're going to hear some different information from different backgrounds um, and different theories or agents and situations they've worked through. Um, and these are also women that are successful in their real estate careers as well. So you're really getting the best of both wor worlds with it. Uh, we'll start up in my, I have you up in my right-hand corner. Miss Stacy, could you start and we'll swoop, swoosh around. So tell them who you are, what market center you're in, um, and just like a smidge of information. It could be about your team. It could be personal, whatever you wish. Sure. I'm Stacy Patzer. I'm um, with the uh, 330 Consultants Office um, out of the Grove City location, mostly. I uh, live down here. My daughter and I are a team, Castle 22. Um, and then my other daughter is also a real estate agent in Louisville. So we have many, many, many real estate conversations in our home. <laughs> I love it. And Stacy's from the Grove City in Ohio. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Why? What's the other one? <laughs> Uh, no, well, people may not know where Grove City is. Oh, okay, gotcha. I was like, no, she lives in Ohio. Why haven't you write Kentucky Southern Bells? All right, Miss Leanne. <laughs> I am Leanne Martin, and I work with the Keller Wiggins Legacy Group office um, in Richmond, Kentucky, but we've got a few satellite offices that we have agents out of as well all over central Kentucky. Um, I am part of the MVP team, Martin and Vickers Partnership. So my last name is Martin Vickers, is Jennifer Vickers, tech guru for the region. Um, she is my cousin, and we've been together working in real estate for five years, no, seven years, seven years, not bad. Um, but she worked many years in real estate before me, and I came from the nonprofit world where um, I was done after 14 years and entered the wonderful world of real estate. Miss Christina. Hello, I'm Christina Butcher, um, same market center as Leanne, so everything she just said. I've uh, <laughs> been doing this for a little while, and I am an individual agent. I don't have a partner or a team. Um, I was a teacher for 16 years, left back in May uh, to do real estate full time, so best move I've made in a while. <laughs> and we love it. We love it. Uh, so for those not familiar with MCM, it's Market Center Mentorship. It is um, an ancillary for productivity coaching within Keller Williams. Um, productivity coaching is training for new agents, agents who typically have less than six transactions in a 24-month period. Um, so we're going to kind of dive in um, of how to be successful. But before we do that, guys, I really want to make sure that we're all kind of on the same 
same um, playing field and uh, same understandings. One of the biggest things um, about learning and having that growth mindset is also having a lot of clarity on it. So when we're talking about a successful agent, what does that mean exactly for you guys? What's the definition of that? So as we continue to talk about what a successful agent does, we know what those characteristics are of that. Who wants to go first? Oh, I'll round robin call you three out. You know I will. <laughs> I'll start. Um, I define a successful agent as someone that sets goals and has somebody that holds them accountable to those goals um, where they treat what they do like a business and they are their own boss that's going to hire or fire themselves each day um, with a balance between building their business, working in their business and their life. That's a lot of balance. But then also they use systems to help multiply the impact that they have. Whew, that's a big, that's, that's a lot to unload. Okay. <laughs> they're a rock star. They're going to do great. All right, Stacey, Christina, what, can you guys add to that or kind of further expand on it? Or what are your, are, do you guys agree with her? I definitely agree. I think um, for me, it's about sprinkling real estate into all of your conversations. Um, just so whether you're, you know, you're not vomiting real estate on people, um, just like they see in social media, part personal, part business. But if you're always sprinkling it into your conversations, that's the more people are going to uh, rem remember you when it comes time for them to buy or sell. Um, during a transaction to service your client extremely well, um, make their transaction an experience for them, not just a buy or a sell of their home. And then to make sure that you're staying in touch with those clients on a regular basis, um, that will come back to you tenfold, um, as long as you're loving on your people, um, even after the transaction is complete. Christina, how do you, for that successful agent, we, we hear a lot. I was writing some of this down in the chat, guys. So showing up each day as a business owner, setting your goals, sticking to your systems and models. That can be really, really tough. What have you seen in those new agents? Um, it, so Christina works specifically just with our part-time and our satellite office agents. And so Leanne in the St. Marcus Center works with just our full-time so you guys are getting a perspective from two different mentors who handle two different types of agents. So Christina, from your perspective with part-time agents, these are really great principles. Do they apply the same way for part-time agents as they do full-time agents? I think they do. However, what might be successful for a part-time agent is, is going to look completely different than a full-time agent. They're not going to need the volume of business. They're probably not going to be able to handle the volume of business that a full-time agent can do. So they've got to find that balance between their other job and doing this and kind of building off what Stacy said, um, taking care of their clients adequately. Because um, if you get too busy as a part-time agent, you can't, you can't live on your people and take care of them like you should. That's a really good point. Yeah. So later on, we're going to talk about leveraging and cost and things like that, but just put a pin in that thought. So keep in the back of your mind, guys, as we're talking about what the difference are between the two of them. We'll talk about part-time agents. We'll talk about leveraging. But in general, I wanted to make sure we had a very clear understanding of what it is that we see as a successful agent. So Stacey, you hit a little bit on this when you talked about um, loving on their people. And Leanne, you brought this point up too. They're showing up every single day as a business owner. Um, what does that look like? And I know this wasn't one of our pre predetermined questions, but I love the fact that you brought that up. Because one of the things that I've come to discover um, for those when they they move from that E to P or when they they kind of have that light bulb go off is when they do, they really uh, lean into the fact that they are business owners that you are running a business. What does that mean? Like how do you how do you transfer? How do you transcend beyond or get over that hump of being somebody that's just a licensed agent to I am a business owner? <laughs> Um. <laughs> the systems, um, consistently using the systems. Um, maybe you use them for a half hour, you know, when you're a part-time agent and then you get better at it. So you can get an hour in there each day or whatever. And then, you know, some people try to transition from full-time, part-time, then to part-time, part-time, and then part-time, full-time, and then full-time real estate. So, I mean, it's a process and it takes time, but if you're consistently using those systems, then you can build time on that, get better at it, and that will help you transfer. 
Gotcha. So being consistent is key with that. Leanne, when it, we, you worked in nonprofit before you worked in a very business oriented world. So for you, you, you've yep. seen kind of both sides of it. Yeah. What is a key uh, trait or what is something that you see in an agent when you know that it's clicked for them, that they're, they're an entrepreneur and they're a business owner and they take it seriously. Yeah. It's, it's the whole package, right? It's not just the, the buying. So it's not just getting a client and working with a client. It's, it's building the whole business. Right. And so to me, as you're asking, it's, it's, I go back to and avert to what I did in the, in the corporate world where, you know, you had goals that you set every year, you had a budget that you set every year and you follow the budget and you stick to it and you had to make exceptions, but there were thought processes behind it. And then that got broken down into, okay, well, if this is our yearly goal, this is our quarterly goal, and this is what we have to do this month. And so you're, you're tracking all of that information to make sure that you're on target and that you understand lead and lag measures, right? Like wow. what, what is going to produce the result? What do we need to do to get the work? And then what do we need to keep an eye on to make sure that it's still happening the way that it should? And then the other piece is for, for new agents that are starting, I, I always talk about how you need to balance like working in the business and on the business, right? Because you're building your brand, you're, you're filling your pipeline. You've got to spend time equally with both of those. But for new agents, the bulk of their time is all the building the business and building the pipeline. So you're going to spend more time on building your business. But you want to get to the point where it's equal, where it's balanced, where you've got enough business coming in that you, you keep building it, but you now are also spending half the time working your business. Christina, you work with a lot of the part-time agents. Mm -hmm. um, Leanne brings up that balance. We talk about balance a lot, especially in the MCM world. How do you find it and what advice can you give to new agents or individuals who um, are part-time right now about finding that balance? Because we noted it's going to be different for a full-time agent versus a part-time agent, but there's still a ton of value in there. For you, what is it that you see in that characteristic when a part-time agent, it finally clicks for them? Being able to schedule themselves uh, to where they can spend that time that's needed. As a part-time agent, it is so hard to get lost in your other job and you're not scheduling that time that is specific for real estate. They think when they first come in, it's almost like it's a side hustle. I'll work this as I can. I don't have to put a lot of time into it. And then they get frustrated when things aren't happening. You've got to have that time scheduled to work on the real estate. If it's well, Stacy, you've said this yeah. before, earlier many, many times. <laughs> Well, I think, I mean, and I know it was this way for me and it's probably for everybody. You're like, okay, I have my real estate license. You know, where's all my peeps? I'm here. And then you're like, where's all my peeps? <laughs> you know, and you, you just assume people are going to use you, but that's not how it works. You have to put yourself out there and, and show that those people should use you. Oh, that's really tough. I'm going to ask a tough question. Okay. We're going to skip over our part-time class training for just a second. I'm going to jump to another question because we segued beautifully into this, guys. Um, and I asked this question to you. What is a reasonable amount to spend your first year of real estate when it comes to lead gen and putting yourself out there? And Leanne, you're going to, I know, you. I knew you're going to giggle at this one. Here's what I mean. Um, I'm tell a brief story, guys. And this is why I asked this question. My first year of doing PC, um, many, many pounds ago, I had an agent who was brand new, who came into it and, and said, I'm going to, you know, get 5,000 door hangers and I'm going to walk around this neighborhood and I'm going to do this. And it was this astronomical number. And I looked at him and went that I, I said, you know, just like with my clients, I can guide you, but I can't tell you what to do. I'm going to advise you that I feel like this is not a good use of your resources based off the fact that you don't have the business to support this. And we worked backwards from the numbers. He still went ahead and do it. And it's been a disaster ever since. That's a long story. However, in your first year, we know that you're typically, it's a, a new business. It's very expensive to get your license initially. So what is that balance or what is that number? What should we be doing that first year in order to get ourselves out there without spending an arm and a leg? Your daily 10-4. What? Who daily knows what daily 10-4 is? Show of hands. 
Anybody? Okay, Leanne, I expect you to know everything. All right, Stacy, explain a daily 10 for. So um, you're um, adding 10 people on command a day. You are making 10 contacts a day, Facebook, um, you know, whatever, with um, them responding as well. It's not, doesn't count as a contact unless they respond and um, sending 10 note cards and then viewing 10 homes a day. You don't have to per go to 10 homes a day, but you have to pick the neighborhood that you live in, see what popped up new, look at the pictures, see the details, get familiar with that. Um, neighborhoods that your friends live in or your family that you can, when you see them, can have a conversation with them about, oh, did you see that house that popped up this week that has the four bedrooms and beautiful backyard? Um, but if you're doing that daily 10-4, and then also visit the homes, do fake previews or fake uh, showings, not fake, they're for yourself so you can view the home. And then when you get to your mom's club, PTO meeting or whatever, you know, oh, I'm so sorry, I was almost late because I was previewing a home. <laughs> you know, there's your sprinkle right there. And it's so simple. <laughs> So let's talk about this, this preview homes for a second. I know my first year of real estate, um, I'm a very big rule follower. I do not like to break rules. Uh, so I'm very hesitant when it comes to what I can and cannot do on things. Um, is it okay to schedule a showing for a home to go view it if you have no intention of purchasing? Do you communicate with the listing agent and say, hey, I'm, I'm just previewing your home. I wanted to give you a heads up. How do you how do you do that? Or do you wait for open houses? Walk me through what that is because there's going to be some, some different opinions on this one. Leanne, I know you're bursting. Tell me. Oh, I thought, I thought you were asking Stacey. Um, I love that she talked about the 10 virtual, like to look at it, look at 10 daily. Cause when I always teach that the 10 four, I say it's impossible to go view 10 homes a day. It's just impossible. So I'm like 10 view, go and see 10 in the week, but I love the preview 10 a day. Just not when I say preview, um, virtually preview. Um, I, when I'm going to look at homes for just preview purposes, I, I look for ones that are vacant and I schedule those and I don't really worry about it. I just, I just go do the vacants. If it's an occupied one that I want to see, I will, I will give the listening agent a heads up. Hey, I just want to, you know, preview this home for a potential client. If I actually have a client in that market, if I don't have it in that price range, then I'm, I'm honest and I tell them, I'm just, you know, learning the market and I'd like to go look at this home if that's okay with your sellers. Um, and then, or I do the open houses. That's how I do my, my previews. Christina, with part-time agents who are working maybe nine to five jobs, they don't have the ability to do things during normal business hours. Typically a lot of their stuff is crammed into the weekends. Yeah. What are some advice for them that they could apply this 10 for for part-time agents or agents that, um, may not have the ability to be full-time? Um, well, I think the virtually previewing, that was something I did a lot and I still do every day at least once I look through the hot sheet whether it's my area or just anywhere in the MLS I look through I want to know what's coming on I look maybe I'm looking for something specific um some of my new agents will joke well how, they'll mention a house oh yeah I saw that one come on they're like how do you know that do you just sit and study it no but I, I do look at it a lot I want to know what's out there I want to know what's coming on um and as far as you know I tell them so many agents think that if they're working another job, that that doesn't make them a good real estate agent or they can't help people. And I tell them that right there is your sphere. You know, that's where so many of my first, you know, deals came from was people I worked with. Get out there, make sure your coworkers know because um, that's where your, that's where your business is going to come from at first. That's absolutely right. All right. We're going to pause for just a moment, guys. Um, open it up to the audience. Ask some questions about that first year. They've got some great material. I want to give you a second to, to pause and really write this down. I put it in the chat. That 10-4 is can be applicable, applicable to any agent at any point and stage in their career right now. And is a really, really solid practice to have. So I'm what questions do you do you have for us? Like, ask away. These women have been doing this. They they love this. They pour themselves into it. Let's specifically talk about what that looks like when we set those habits, what we're doing to build the business. What we got for us? Got a lot of closed off cameras. You are secret agents. Hi, Miss Elke. I see you. 
All right, you guys are going to be silent on this one. That's okay. I'm, I'm just going to jump in. I you work are. from home. I'm still doing virtual schooling with three children under 16 in the house. It's a little, I say discombobulated but I am in the process of getting, of working and getting them back into school. And I've been doing this for three years, but I also work from home at Intuit. So it's kind of hard saying to, I can use my, and my, my coworkers when they're all over the place, they're in California, they're there. I have a few here and there's, they're all, so I'm just trying to get my ground as of, as of right now, now that we're in this, well, in a slightly thawing out phase, but for it decided to snow yesterday. <laughs> um, oh, it started in Ohio yesterday, guys, for two days. No, here today. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's still on my back porch. It's just the fact of, I know you just said something about the, the door hangers. I thought about that, but yet again, that is kind of expensive. Um, I have been looking into 72 sold. I'm not sure how I want to work that in with it yet, but it's just the fact of getting my, my face in the place basically and getting out to where I need to get out to is kind of my struggle right now. So Antoinette, have you ever thought about, because you work in a position and this applies for really anybody, that if you work in a spot and your sphere isn't local, what we see oftentimes is agents who are creating referral networks. So you may know somebody who's out in California, but we know the average span of a time a person's in a house, what now is between seven and 10 years. Is that right? The latest numbers. Mm -hmm. So we know within that period of time, you know them, they may be ready, willing, and able to sell and purchase elsewhere. And you can be that resource. So even if you're in a position in your life, guys, as a first year agent or in, as any point in time, your agent, you are able to create business outside of just strictly transactions. You can be that referral partner and you can be that, that person to go to. And Stacey made a really good point. Get your face out there so people know that you're a real estate agent. They may not use you because you're not within their market, but if they know somebody that's going to your area or going to the state of Ohio or Kentucky, they may call you up and say, hey, who do you know that I need to know that can help me? help me sell, buy a house? Or who do you know that I should know that it, that can help me sell my house? We're moving, et cetera, et cetera. So think outside the box. We land touch base on it, that it's more than just a tra transaction. It's building up your business, building onto your business. And this is part of that. Think beyond the transaction. So what other ways can you utilize that knowledge and that, that expertise that you spent so much time working on and you're continually pouring into? How do you use that value to your benefit? Todd sent a really great question. He said, current listings that I think have good value. Is it okay to advertise on Facebook as daily update to others? Have to get listing agent approval every time. Todd, that's a really great question. Who wants to take this one? It's good practice to get listing, um, the agent's approval to share, but it's on the MLS. It's it's in the, the, the IDX feed. Like it's something that we can share. I mean, I see all the time, on, on my Facebook newsfeed where people share cool houses from California or, oh, look at this one, it's hot in a zone that, that you're just sharing a cool house, right? And you can, that's fine. Um, make sure you give credit to the brokerage that has a listing, but you don't have to technically have permission. As long as you're sharing from the MLS and you give the, um, the acknowledgement where it is for the brokerage that is marketing, marketing it, you can share it. In our MLS. Yeah, we're I in the time in Ohio. I believe so. Stacy, you want to take that one? I was just gonna say, I I've told my three of my girls around here, I've just said, you know, just let them know that you're gonna share it and make sure that they're okay with it. Um, but we've also talked about, and you guys are gonna have to help me remember because one of the websites that we talked about going to is Feedly feedly.com and there's a real estate section on there that you can find like those houses you know lebron james sold his house or you know whoever it was and you can post that and then guys what was the other i can never remember that troy marsh has a site that he tells us all the time i know what you're talking about well i'm gonna have to remember the name of it um um I'll have to, I, I'm going to ask Troy, if anybody sees we Troy have one down here, that's like older homes, well, like, you know, the old Victorians and they share these. So you can share that way. It's, it's finding 
what speaks to you that in, in building your sphere from that, um, it, was it Antoinette? Was that her name? Mm -hmm. Uh, Antoinette. She, yes. Yes. She's yes. the one. Um, and she then was talking about the referral. Yes. Like, she, if I, if I were you, I would be making connections with those people outside of work, right? So connecting with them on, on social media. And so then when you post stuff that's real estate related, they're, they're getting that reinforcement and the, the seeds Stacy was talking about that you're in real estate. So that, that when they do think of somebody, even if it's there, you can get a referral fee. If they're selling something in California, hey, that's just like selling something here, right? When you pay that referral fee. Um, and you can create smart plans I have for my people that are out of state because I, I lived and worked in North Carolina for 14 years. I've got all my contacts that are down there on a separate smart plan where I remind them, hey, I can hook you up with good agents down there whenever you're ready to buy or sell down there. But you've got to, you got to create those systems so that you do stay in contact. And if you have three kids under 16, about half of my business comes from my 11 year old and all the sports and stuff that he does. Like you got to find your tribe and then connect with them. So talking about, oh, go ahead. I was agreeing, I got, I got her. <laughs> so another way that we talk about lead generation um, that's cost-effective guys, especially for our first year agents. Um, one of the best pieces of advice was given to me by an agent when I first started, I highly respect her, she's still in the business. Um, and she said, just like what Leanne said, she said, find your thing. And she's like, get involved in it, but don't just be a participant. She's like, be a, a go-to person, be a person that regularly people are going to hear the name of. So as you begin to post more and you begin to get out there, it's not just, um, who is this person? It's a, it's a name recognition. And so that was the, the best piece of advice she, I think she ever gave to me. Um, so real estate, I had a ton for my kids. Like I have, I have a two-year-old and a, a soon to be five-year-old and just the little things that they were involved in. It was like, oh, Hey, yes, I can certainly, I can help you. Oh, your mom's moving in California. Let me get you a referral. It's, it was amazing when you make those connections, but the key to that, and if you keep hearing what they're saying, guys, is finding that niche, find the thing that works best for you, because if you don't, you're not going to want to do it. And that's another thing. I want to talk just briefly about this because I, and I asked this as one of the questions and I said, one hit wonders, what do you do when you've gone through all of your friends and family who were buying and selling and now don't have anything in the pipeline? Because we've talked about use your sphere, you know, my kids, this and da, 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 da. But what happens once you've gone through that first year of all your friends and family, and now you you're left with nothing. What is your advice that we, that doesn't happen, that we don't have our one hit wonders. You don't get there. I mean, seriously, I, okay, you've got your friends that you know are going to buy or sell and they're just waiting for you to get your license, right? But you got to have the systems in place. I keep going back to that, that once you're under contract with those folks that you're, you're sharing their success because people want to work with people that are successful. So you're like putting that out there. You ask for reviews and then you, their sphere is your sphere. So you have to build it out from the get-go. If you just work the six that you already had in line, ready to go, then you've not built a business. You've just sold That's a few crazy. houses. You've <laughs> got to ask for the reviews. You've got to post the reviews. You've got to share the successes in all the steps of the way, but it needs to be authentic and it needs to be personable so that you're again, speaking and reinforcing that tribe. We were talking about an MCM today, like the, the canned, oh, got this under contract. People don't read that. They just skim through it. They don't see it. They don't internalize it. But if you're sharing, you know, we looked at 10 houses and we finally found the one. I'm so happy for them. That's a story that people read. Or if like Rachel posted, she got one under contract and she was celebrating. She went to crumble and got a box full of cookies. Like that's something that people engage with. And that's what you need. People need to see you having success. They need to see you and start trusting and learning that you know what you're doing and that you can do the same for them but you can only do that if you put yourself out there Ooh, in awesome. a real way Woo, that was that was like some major truth bombs right there i'm just gonna take a second to like make my pulse go down a second stacy right. to that you can also put your um and this is the sprinkle part you know when you're reaching out to people it's springtime um do you to your clients or your sphere or your database or whatever um do you need a do you need your driveway 
paved or coated? Is that the, what it is coated? Do you need a power <laughs> washer? Do you need a landscaper? You know, I have all of those contacts. If you need any of those services, please reach out to me. Oh, and if you know anybody who's looking to buy or sell, please share their name with me. Um, because then you're kind of giving them a serve something of value and asking for something in return. I just want to notate guys, by the way, every single thing that these women have talked about, how much is, how much does it cost total? Zero. Well, let's take that back. The notes postage is up to 50 cents a note. So if you send out 10 a day, it's $5 a day, one less Starbucks, you got a drink or avocado toast, apparently. With inflation, it's probably closer to 10, but I digress. When you're ready to invest a little bit more, circle prospecting where you do have the buys and sells so that you can, like we just had one that sold in a neighborhood and we got another listing from it. It's all in that neighborhood. Now there's a FISBO in that neighborhood. Guess what? We're going to touch base. <laughs> okay. You just said the word circle prospecting. Raise your hand if anybody knows what that actually means. We, we I want to make sure we are, Okay. Leanne, explain circle prospecting for a little bit. Um, so circle prospecting is exactly what it is. So in the area of where you were, go around, right? And so it can be geographical or it can be um, metaphorical, right? So if I sold a, in a house in a particular subdivision, like hitting the houses around it, that's a geographical circle prospecting. So um, door knocking or sending out postcards or door hangers, right? Um, manpower door knocking it doesn't cost you as much as if you put it all in the mail, but it's a way to to build out your business from what you're already succeeding with. But then there's the the more metaphorical circle prospecting. It's your your friends and your sphere, right? So if I sold one to this guy that works at KU who, you know, share with your friends. If anybody's looking, you know, everybody got a raise. If anybody's ready to, to use that to buy their next house, make sure you let them know that I can, I can do that business for them. But you've got to, you've got to do the actual legwork to do the circle. Oh, that's good. Okay. Christina, what about my part-time agents that maybe can't door knock? What does, what does that circle prospecting look like for them? Um, I had an agent that sat down and just wrote a little note. And I mean, again, you had to pay for the postage, but she wrote a little note to everybody in the subdivision and just said, hey, just sold a house near you. Uh, here's my card. Would love to work with you if you're interested. Um, she had somebody actually snap a picture of it and send it to her and say, hey, I wish I'd known this. I just bought. I'd love to have worked with you. It was, I mean, it, it wasn't a lead, but it was kind of validation for what she'd done. Um, so, you know just going and, and putting a little pot bar or something on in that area. Taking I love it. Okay, yeah. guys, let's do a little bit of inspiration. Leanne, Stacy, Christina, I love that. Give me an agent who's done something recently or ever in your career you've been doing this that worked. What was, what, what was something that was simple? They, they applied it and it worked. Well, for me, I, um, so the neighborhood I live in is no soliciting. So you have to be careful of that. You can't go knocking on doors if, if you have a no soliciting in that neighborhood. Um, but in my neighborhood, I have a client who um, moved in here, I don't know, 2016. Then her mom bought a house behind her across the alley. And then her sister bought a house two doors down. So they all three live in this neighborhood together. Well, now she's on her third kid and she had no kids when she bought the house. She said, we need a bigger house. She said, we want to live on this street. We need an office. We need a three-car garage. We need a full basement. We need, like, she, I was like, okay, I'll get right on that for you. <laughs> so because there's, you know, no soliciting, I went through it. It was only 24 homes. So that was in my mind, I'm like, this is never going to happen. But I typed up a letter and told all the people on that street, well, 21 of them, three of them didn't qualify with her criteria. And just said, if you are considering moving, um, I have a family who lives in the neighborhood. And I kind of told their story, I didn't give their names or anything, told their story. And I had two people call me back out of 24, which That's a pretty good conversion rate. That is a huge conversion rate. Um, and we're looking at one of them again tonight. Um, but I kind of think telling the story really, really helped. Um, and then and the 
the one that we're looking at again tonight for the second time, they're they're moving to North Carolina. So I could potentially have a referral fee out of that one. Mm, got a couple of Carolina. We have any agents from the Carolinas on here now? Leanne, what's an agent that blew you away? That they did something, they applied it, and they're and they're continually. And and is there anybody that comes to mind that just keeps crushing it even after they've graduated? <laughs> um it's not circle prospecting, but it's a sphere building and um, tribe finding. I've got one that's an MCM right now that um, has started a book club Ooh. and she's headed it up. So she, I mean, she's got this Facebook group that's in her first book club had 30 people. She did it again the next month, had 30 people. And that, you know, they go to this um, restaurant and it's one that she talked to the restaurant about, you know, getting a, a large space to have a book club. And even worked with the restaurant to get themed drinks to go with the book each month. And so like she's building her tribe, right? And we, we talked about ways to sprinkle in the real estate. Like she's not down your throat. Uh, I'm, I'm here to, to sell you something, right? There, there are people that like books and they're trying to create relationships and she's doing that. But there are occasions where she will sprinkle in that she's in real estate as she builds that relationship. Wow. Uh, and she, she doesn't spend any money, right? Like they're buying their own food at the restaurant. She just worked it out with the bar to make it coordinated and they have the specialized drinks. And, and now she's got a captive audience that she's building relationships with. Guys, zero dollars. And the oh. fact that she went above and beyond and added that like that plus plus to that, mm -hmm. we hear so much right now, especially since family reunion from last year to this year, we know that the market is shifting. And we know that we are having to do more work than ever before. And it sounds like that's what she did. She did the more work, but it was so cost effective. That was brilliant. Uh, book clubs, that's a really easy way to, to do it. it. It's something that people are interested in. The fact that she got 30 people, holy cow, Batman. Um, that would be a club. 30 showed up for the in physical, the, you know, in person. We're going to talk about the book, but there's more in her group. I, I, I love our neon sign, the, the be you, give value, work hard. Like, I just keep going back to that with all of my people, right? Because we're all different. We all have different focuses. Like, what, what is you? What is authentic to you? And if you, if you do what's comfortable for you and what you love, then people are going to respond to that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, guys, I love it. So we've had a lot of success with uh, these agents and these successful agents. The pattern we keep hearing over and over again is that they're showing up consistently. Consistency is key with this, whether it's a, a healthy habit, whether it's your business, whatever the case may be, it's showing up every single day. I'm going to kind of go off a little bit of a rabbit trail. You guys know that I'm infamous for this. I want to talk about that for a moment. Um, showing up every single day. You all three have said this as being incredibly important. What is a piece of advice you can give, especially our newer agents or agents who are just feeling beat up by the business? What is the piece of advice you can give them that they can use to either get out of that rut for them to uh, break beyond that obstacle or that limiting belief? To me, it would be find your person. Find that person that is accountable, that's going to hold you accountable. Um, but at the end of the day, if you are just exhausted and nothing seems like it's working, uh, find that person to talk to, whether it's a more experienced agent that's maybe been there, done that, and can tell you that it's not you, that things just get, you just have bad days in real estate, um, but find somebody to talk through things with, because that just, it just helps. Yeah. And yeah. the bounce ideas off of. Oh, that's one of my favorite. I, yes, I love that. Um. For me, I think communication, whether it's with the, the people that you're trying to build relationship with or the people that you are already in relationship with, a lot of times we agents, they get scared of what might go wrong and they freeze up and they don't have the conversations, right? Whether it's a listing that's not getting the activity it needs or a buyer that's just got unrealistic expectations, like they, they, they get into a bad position because they're not having the honest conversations. There are ways that you can give value and share knowledge where those conversations don't have to be hard. It's not, it's not something that um, they're doing wrong or it's just, you know, you need to be aware that this is what the market is and you need, you need to know it, right? As an agent, you need to, to study and 
And part of knowing it is doing the 10 preview so you understand the market and you understand what's happening and looking at the micro um, area around what they're, whether either selling or, or looking for to understand that micro market so that you can explain it to your client and have the real conversation so they can move forward with an informed decision. But if you don't, if you're too scared to have the conversation, then that's a problem. You need to always be in communication. Mm, that's a good one. Stacy. what you got for me? Participate. You need to participate. You need to ask lots of questions. Um, and I mean, I know, you know, the majority of these are probably new agents and we have calls every week. We have workshops twice a month and um, we're learning every single time that we do that. And, um, you know, even if you don't currently have the business, when you have the business, it'll be so much easier to do a transaction because you've been participating and learning. And um, my three on here are very good at that. And, um, but if you don't, then you're going to fumble the whole way the trans through the transaction. It's not going to be a good experience for you. It's not going to be a good experience for your client, um, which could make things a little bit more difficult, but um, just, you got to participate. You got to ask lots of questions. So if you're a new agent and you have to have a difficult conversation with a client and you are struggling with it, uh, one of the things I was told to do, and this was many, many moons ago, and I've kept this, um, piece to myself. I've, I've done this since then at any, com any point in time, I have a conversation with myself in the mirror. And I know this sounds really goofy, but it allows me to check my facial expressions. It allows me to feel more comfortable. It allows me to say the words and practice what I'm going to say out loud. So that when I actually come to the moment that I need to have that difficult conversation, like, yeah, they found termites in the inspection and it's a VA loan. So we understand that there's going to be some complications or, you know, Hey, title hasn't set the title commitment and uh, we can't close in two days and your moving truck's coming and we need to figure this out and, 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 um, I practice those conversations. Do you guys do the same? I don't use a mirror, but I, that's why I have Jen. <laughs> <laughs> I practice with Jen, but I, I, I practice also with the, the people that are in the program, right? When we're meeting yeah. weekly and we, we figure out what those hard conversations are and, and we're like, okay, what do we do? What do we say? And so we practice together. Like, okay, this is what we need to make sure we get. So we need to be mindful of and ready for, and we practice before they make the phone call. And sometimes yeah. we make the phone call in the room together. <laughs> and I'm sitting there, I'm there, hey, this. I love it. If you are in the Dublin area or in our 330 um, Ohio market, we have call nights on Tuesday nights from six to eight, uh, where it is lead generation call out like for two hours. It's scientifically like the most opportune time during the week. Um, and we will sit with you and have the ability to kind of bounce off. Um, oh my gosh, I'm about to call this person. Okay, what do I say? Let's, let's walk through what this is. Let's walk through what these objections could potentially be. What if they say no? They say no. Let's, you know, they're going to got to shoot your shot. Christina, you made a beautiful point with it. Having that person, finding that person that you can be accountable with. Um, if you're in the MCM group, uh, we have other agents. We definitely want you guys to connect with, connect with your mentor. If you're not with an MCM, um, you're more than welcome. Pop your email into the chat box. If you want to connect with anybody else, um, get talking guys. One of the biggest lessons I think um, that I want to impart onto first year agents don't ostracize or isolate yourself because you don't feel that you are smart enough, bring enough value, or don't feel worthy enough to come to the table. That's the biggest lesson I have for you. Show up. Even if you don't know what you're doing, because none of us really do half the time, show up, mm -hmm. ask the questions, participate in the classes, learn and grow. I think that's one of the biggest things that I, I have learned. Um, even as I've moved beyond uh, the first year of real estate, I was always told to show up every single day. And Leanne brought this point up beautifully when she said, you need to show up as a business owner every single day. You need to show up. That's the biggest key, that consistency of it. All right, guys, we're going to move on to our last final question. Um, a little bit into lead gen um, and about our rookies. We've talked about, I, well, I shared one of the things that I found that, that was a mistake. I want to talk about two things. We talked about some great things. Give me the biggest mistake you've seen a rookie do. Um, that could have been preventable that somebody else can take use and say, Hey, I'm not going to do that. 
as I'm going to let you guys simmer about this, um, think about the times or the, the lessons that could have been learned. And what does that look like? I think an obvious one is not telling people that you're an agent. Some of them just think that they can post one time and it's just going to, they're just, the leads are going to pour in and then they never say anything else again. They don't tell their friends. They don't tell their family. They, that's, that's a huge thing. You've got to let people know in a polite way that, <laughs> that you're in it. You want business. Can I play devil's advocate on this for a second? Mm -hmm. How do you tell people what you're doing without being like blah, 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 about it? Like I, one of the common objection handlers I, or common objections I hear from folks is well, I don't want to shove it down people's throat. And it just makes me feel uncomfortable or I feel like I'm being too salesy. What's your response to agents when they say that? Like you all were saying earlier, just showing that you enjoy your job. I mean, doing something as simple as, you know, as we were saying earlier, hey, I got to see this today as I was going to show a house or, hey, stop by here at this local place to have lunch as I was out showing houses. You don't have to ask for business to show them that you enjoy your what you do I love it show them that you enjoy it but you're also good at it right so I um I, I think I'm a kid right so I'm always every single day we're doing something right I wear I don't have it on today but because I knew I was presenting that's uh dressed up and polished but <laughs> I wear the t-shirts that have the kw or the cute realtor sayings and and so they know because they just see me there all the time with my kid. They know I'm in real estate. And then I will take real estate calls and I'll sit there on the side of the soccer field and I will discuss real estate and I will do it in a bomb way. So they know <laughs> that I'm good, right? And so then, the, then I guess I'm like, oh, you're in real estate? Like, yeah, are you looking? Right, like I get them to approach me. But yes, I'm also not afraid of the ask, right? If I see somebody that's on social media that talks about moving and they're in my sphere, then I'm calling and saying, you know, <laughs> Let me help you out. Uh, one team, Leanne is a boss and she's a badass. Absolutely. I love it. Stacy, what else you got for me? I just say be excited. I mean, we have the best job, really. You cannot beat being a real estate agent. It's so much fun and you should be excited about it <clears throat> and be willing to talk about it. And as a new agent, I know you feel like you don't know that much, but again, we have contacts for everything. You know, if someone says, oh, I've been working out in the yard all, all day. Oh, what well, do you need a landscape? Escape or me in real estate. I've got tons of contacts I can send you. Um, you know, you, you'll end up with clients who are doctors and dentists that you can end up referring down the road. So um, just be excited about it and tell people, oh my gosh, I saw this house today. It was so beautiful. It had this koi pond in the backyard. You know, it could have been one you virtually saw, <laughs> but you can still talk about it. <laughs> Everybody wants to hear the, the unique things we see. <laughs> uh, abs absolutely. Okay. What's the weirdest thing you guys in the, the crowd here? Please tell me what's the strangest thing you found when in a showing? I want to hear from you guys and I want to hear from the audience. Hit me with this one. Todd, what, what's the strangest thing you've ever seen before? Literally one month in. <laughs> so I don't know that I've been, I haven't even really done a showing or what have you yet? Oh, that's You're okay. Some fun stuff. <laughs> well, uh, that's why I was asking earlier. My, I'm literally trying to get the social media thing. I asked the question about a listing because I'm trying to. I think one niche that I think would be fun is showing it the beautiful houses, and but I got to be careful. That's why I asked that question because I'm trying to figure out my my niche on. And one of my buddies basically said, "You need to show some neat houses and make that." which make makes sense. So I'm sorry, I'm fighting a cold. So if I sound oh, you're fine, I love it. I love interaction. I think it's great. And the fact that you're a month in and you're already popping on here shows great initiative and a growth mindset, which is warms the cockles of my heart. You have no idea. I love what my people are involved with it. Um, one of the, there is a, a Facebook page called for the love of houses. Does yes, anybody else follow it? Yes. Okay. Everybody needs to follow it. It's called for the love of houses. And it is a public Facebook page and it's super nice. And they post homes from all over the country that are on the MLS that are just gorgeous, either historic or opulent. 
Um, another fun, this is more of like hilarious. Another fun one on Instagram is Zillow gone wild. Mm -hmm. Some of those houses I'm like, Ooh, anybody see the Halloween one recently? The Zanesville uh, one. What'd you say? The Zanesville one's been going viral too. Yes, there is. There's one Zanesville, Ohio going viral too. There is another one that's, uh, I am close to Dublin, Ohio. There's another one that's going viral in Dublin, Ohio that every Dublin agent I know right now is posting about it. Um, Leanne said earlier, Feebly, I think, was it Leanne or Stacy? Feebly, it's F-E-E-L-Y, right? E yeah. F-E-E-D-L-Y. Oh, Feebly. Okay. I'm going to write that down. I'm sorry. I'm trying to find Troy's too. Um, yeah. So let's, we'll start pulling our resources here. Uh, but we, when we are in Columbus, Ohio, like Columbus Blue Jackets player will sell their house. You guys can post that. So honestly, Todd, you can, you can post pretty much if it's public knowledge, it's MLS, go ahead and post it. And if that's something that's going to constantly get up onto the feed and that's going to engage people, that's awesome. I mean, people love to look at houses. They love looking at houses. And here's another really cool thing to do guys. If you want to up the ante, somebody gave me this trick and I love it. When you go to preview the houses, take a video of it. Hey, here's a sneak peek. Go Facebook Live. Here's a sneak peek of the house. Holy cow, look at the size of this bathtub. I could fit four of me in this. Like there are things that are free that you can do that would engage it. I, Internet's like laughing. I actually did do that one time. Leanne, what's your thought? I, I wouldn't do that unless it was in our office and we had permission. Yes, yeah, because true. down here we talk about no, no videos unless you have permission from the seller kind of thing. Oh, so, Yes, do it, but do it with permission. Yes. See, look, this is why I have her here, guys. She's like the other half of my brain, I swear to heavens. Um, but that's absolutely true. And that's something that you can do. Or if it's your own listing, you can do yeah, it. Absolutely. Apps blow that stuff up 110%. Okay, guys, we did not talk about open houses. So we're going to talk about that next time, uh, next month when we, we have this again. Um, Dana, who is over all of one team, is phenomenal at um, giving opportunities for growth and giving opportunities to learn. Um, and she has graced us with the chance to, to be able to share this with you guys and market center mentorship and what we do. Um, so we'll be doing this again uh, next month. We may have a little bit of a different cast of characters, um, but there are mentors who just pour into our agents and I could not appreciate and love them anymore. I call them my unicorns for very valid reasons. Um, I, we are closing in on our time. We have about eight minutes left, seven minutes left in the hour. Um, I want to open up to see if there's any other questions um, that you guys have. And then also for the mentors, what are some of the top resources I can put in the chat for them that either we've talked about, I haven't posted yet, or are other things that they can use to help build up and build on their business? I have a question. Absolutely. Um, so, and I've, I've probably mentioned this before, but I work in an environment where I have access to like over 300 parents and families, but I don't know how to like talk about my real estate without like messing up my my current job, like taking my current job information and merging it with real estate without getting in trouble, I guess I should say. Because I mean, I have a lot, lot of parents that I talk to every single day. Like I find them resources for everything else, but how do I put my resource in there without, you know, mixing the two, I guess I should say. Mm, that's a good one. And that's kind of what I was touching on with the other lady that spoke earlier is, is building the relationship outside of that connection, right? So that you can organically let them know about your real estate. And if you are meeting these people in person, I would be wearing some Keller Williams and some fun, fun little t-shirts so that, that they ask the question and you haven't like taken advantage of the connection. They, they start the questions. Okay. Great. Mm -hmm. That is fantastic. So Alkia, are you going to put that on your uh, goal that you're going to sit down and have your one-on-one -on -one and that's what you're going to focus on this month? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, where my Keller Williams shirt to work. <laughs> if you're allowed to, if it's part of our events. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Uh, walking t-shirts um, are one of the, the, the cheapest, most fun free advertising. Um, my license plate says, well, it said, I recently changed it after several years, realtor mom on it. I had so many comments, questions. I had people run up to me in parking lots like, hey, and I'm like, hi, 
putting their groceries away. Um, there are tons of ways that you can advertise yourself or, or get your voice out there or talk um, about what you're doing and what you're going on. But the key to it, and all three of these women said, women said this, have fun with what you're doing. Find the joy in it. Because if you're just bah humbug, oh my gosh, who wants to work with that? They want to know that you find joy in it. And we want you to find joy in it. If you're finding yourself in that rut, maybe you need to switch directions on what you're doing. Maybe we need to look at what, what is your, what, how you're handling your business. And if you're in our MCM program and you feel that way, this is the most opportune time for you to reach out to your mentor, have a one-on-one -on -one, and deep dive into how to set those goals out and how to accomplish them. All right, ladies, we're going to have some final words about some resources. Who's got what for me, Stacey? I found it. It's mortgagenewsdaily.com. Mortgagenewsdaily.com. Okay. I don't know why I can never remember that. Because we all have a ton of stuff packed into our brain at all times and recall can be a little bit difficult sometimes. Oh, it's just Nate. a long word. That's all. <laughs> There's no way to make it like MSDN or NBC or something of that nature. So it's just a whole big word. That's why. Why we call it MCM. Uh, Nate Brains that join Facebook social media groups in your area that are related to real estate investing and apply 10-4 to that group. Finding an investor or two is a great way to start a good, consistent business. Nate, that's awesome. That is amazing. If you have more questions of how to work with investors, I highly, highly encourage you to um, speak to your mentor. If you are not within the MCM program, um, I encourage you to speak to your broker as well, just to understand what the rules and regs are of that. Investors investing can be a little bit different than a traditional transaction. Would you guys agree? Yeah. Okay. So just make sure that when you're going into that, you just get all the information as possible. A knowledge is power. All right, guys, what are your final parting words for our lovely people who have been wonderful, engaging? I love your audience. You guys have been awesome. I know you're going to talk about open houses next time, but for the new agents, get out there and do those. Those are the agents that are being successful right now. Here's the ones that are getting out there and consistently doing those open houses, uh, being friendly, touching base with the people pretty quickly if they didn't have an agent. Um, but yeah. That's that's what's being the, the best lead source for the most of the agents here. That's where I got my first transaction. The only other thing I would say um, and touch on is don't rush, but also don't have paralysis by analysis, right? You got it goes all goes back to balance. <laughs> the people that rush make mistakes. Your 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 whoever you're accountable with, your broker or your MCM mentor. Um, can help you through processes and there's no reason to rush it right like make sure you cross all your t's and dot all your i's but then also don't just like keep planning yeah you got to do it. it doesn't have to be perfect just get it out there do and it'll get perfect as you go I love, I love it Stacy. just keep practicing practice your, I think Gary Keller said how how much do you practice your business every day so whatever that time is, you can allow for your day, whether you're in part-time or full-time, just make sure that you do it. Maybe it's on Monday, scheduling your social media for the week, you know, Tuesday, sending out your note cards or whatever, just be consistent and keep talking about real estate. Perfect. I love it. So co consistency is key. We find the balance and making sure that we're not being super secret agents. You guys have been amazing. Thank you so much for all of your time. I appreciate you guys immensely and all that you do for our agents. Um, if there's anybody that has any questions um, directly about MCM or anything else like that, I just put my email into the um, chat. It's the director at mcmentorship.com. We will have another session next month and we'll be talking about open houses um, a bit more. We'll cover a lot of these topics the same way, uh, but again, we're going to have a little bit of a different cast of characters. So you get to hear a little bit of a different voice, but we'll have these guys back again because I love being in in the same virtual room as you guys. All right. Have a wonderful rest of the afternoon. If no one else has any questions, comments, quibbles, or concerns, we will let you guys all get onto your wonderful afternoon. Good. All right. Bye.